Thank you very much, Madam. Well, just to be very brief and answering to your question, um, I think what it's very important to say is that um, we've actually been advocating on this issue of, of digital financial service now for many, many years with great advances. And um, we've actually seen um, extremely important is that um, the digital part really has ha actually helped us with a uh, basically goal to reach financial inclusion, even though I we still have 1.3 billion people to go, but we have advanced more than 1.4 billion people in this last years. Now, what we've actually seen during the COVID pandemic is that all the little, uh, you know, in speaking to all the governments, all the governments said to us, you know, hey, we need to sort of send this money to people through during the pandemic. How do we do that? You know, we had heard, you know, this uh, World Bank and the UNSGSA, which is myself and other members, you know, we need to do some kind of investments to be able to make these payments. Well, a lot of countries did very quick uh, uh, change and they were able to make these payments on a bank account on on their mobile wallets and what is this has been amazing and they rolled out id cards very quickly they helped out issues on connectivity very quickly so all the things that seemed to be unsurmountable before to actually advance all of a sudden within six months we're actually there so the know-how is there um how to do it is is you know, the technical capacity is, is actually there. So now it's actually putting all the minds together. And what is actually very important is not a question now, not only in bringing access to financial services in the sense like, you know, I can actually send a subsidy or a, um, or a payment. We need to go even further than that. First of all, we need to actually have not only access to payments, we also need to have access to savings, to build buffers. We need to actually have access for insurance to actually have resilience. Resilience not only for individuals, but also to agricultural sort of, you know, farmers, for SMEs, because in that way, they're going to be seen less, less risky and they're going to have more access to credit in which they will actually be able to increase their expenditure and their investments and be able to offer more employment. So it is part of this very a big um, ecosystem of things that will actually make possible to um, have more investment in the private uh, uh, economy. Now, um, when we say it's all possible, well, it is, I say it's all possible, but some, some things are still not there. And I call them the digital public goods. We think that everybody has a mobile phone. What well, is not true? Not everybody has a mobile phone. Women has less mobile phones than men. Uh, and if they do, they have a, a less quality. Uh, connectivity is not really um, uh, balanced around the country, certainly in the rural areas. You don't find a lot of connectivity, which will not help to roll out issues like payments, even health, digital sort of, you know, uh, uh, help systems, et cetera. So we need to get the connectivity. We need to get the digital IDs. I have to have a woman being able to open a bank account with a digital ID. We need to have a whole digital infrastructure with signatures, with uh, data privacy, with cybersecurity issues. We also need to have interoperable systems that a bank can speak to the mobile uh, phone company, that can speak to a fintech, that can speak to a insurer company, because otherwise you're going to have systems speaking along each other. So interoperability is also a very big issue. And last but not least, is a whole issue of consumer protection, digital and financial literacy, which are the ones that are actually going to make people sort of take the best out of the service that's being offered to them. Now you touched a very important issue, uh, which is the issue of informality. As you very well know, um, when we see what actually has been happening due to COVID, which are the groups of people that were hurt the most? Mostly women and small businesses. Why? They tend to you know, work in the informal sector, so therefore they don't have access to what we all have access to, which are sort of safety nets and access to financing and access to, you know, uh, access to markets more easily. So these are the ones that actually suffer the most. So it is extremely important that we try to bring people into the formal economy. And by digitally financially including them, it's a very good enabler to bring in people into the formal system. What do I mean by that? Um, say that, for example, merchants, mom and pop shops that actually are, you know, for example, in India, we have a million smaller pop shops, but not all of them are actually digitized, not all of them accept, they're still sort of, you know, handling cash. If we could actually take away the sort of the proclivance to cash and actually start getting into a system in which they, all the payments are being done digitally, 
that merchant not only is going to have less of a hassle and you know by dealing with cash less security issues but also he will be able to track much more inventory issues he will be able to sort of have a uh, cash flows uh, history by which with that he would actually have access to more working capital uh, uh, credits and therefore being able to enlarge his business so all these things are extremely important. So digitizing merchants will be really extraordinary. And then once they all do it, they will all accept this sort of, you know, mobile banking. And then people slowly but surely will actually start going into a digitized system and getting into the formal financial system. And by going to the formal financial system, you, you slowly trickle down into the formality of things. And I think that's something that we should be uh, going for. And um, digitizing merchants and digitizing the whole scope is extremely important. Now, I have to tell you that um, I've done this work now for more than 12, 14 years. And there's a couple of places where we need to sort of look even further. And I would say, certainly for women in Africa, we need to do really a much bigger effort. In some countries, we talk about financial inclusion and digital financial inclusion, and it actually goes very quickly. In Africa, really, we need to spend a lot more time. What are the 63% of women in Africa do not have access to financial services? We really, there's a lot more than just making the whole infrastructure work. There is cultural norms. Um, there are many issues that we need to study much better and push a lot more to be able to cater for these people uh, with the goods that will actually enable them uh, to really uh, have a better future. Thank you very much.